Good evening. This is Mike Mangino, anatomy instructor here at Harper College, giving you a demonstration of the sheep spring. So we've already done a lot of the preliminary work, identified our external structures, okay, hemispheres, longitudinal fissure, transverse fissure, and identified the lobes, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, and we've already went ahead and done a sagittal section, and we can begin to identify some structures here. So this structure you see here, this band of white matter, this is the corpus callosum. Okay, that is the commissural tract that connects the right and left hemispheres of the brain. Then if we come down, we see this little band of white matter, that is the fornix. Corpus callosum and the fornix form the roof and the floor of the lateral ventricle. Notice we can't see into the lateral ventricle in this half. And there is a thin membrane here that is the septum pellucidum. So if we look here, this is the other half of the brain. And I have removed superior portion of the cerebrum here just over the lateral ventricle. So this space would be lateral ventricle. And we can kind of lift some of this up and show you. So that's actual space in there. In the ventricles, in all the ventricles, but particularly in the lateral, on the floor of the lateral ventricle, we see this kind of red seaweed looking stuff. This is choroid plexus. That's what makes all the cerebral spinal fluid. So you have that present in the lateral, in the third ventricle, and in the fourth ventricle as well. So continuing on with structures of the um, midbrain here, okay, the diencephalon, that includes the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and then the epithalamus is this region here, composed of the habenular nucleus and the pineal gland. Um, Bio 160 students need only be concerned with the pineal gland and this, the other remaining structures of the diencephalon. And if we kind of fold this up, okay. Oh, actually, you know what? My fault. This is, yeah, that's the habenular nucleus, or I'm sorry, the posterior commissure. Um, this is the pineal gland. My mistake. We can edit that out. That's the pineal gland. The pineal gland is easily located because it is just above the corpora quadrigemini. And I've actually kind of made that sagittal cut a little bit of skew. So we actually see both the right and left superior colliculi, and then right and left inferior colliculi. One, two, three, four. Corpora quadrigemini. All right, uh, might as well go ahead and identify our cerebellum. White tree that we see in the cerebellum is the arbor vitae. And we can go ahead and finish up our ventricular system. So we mentioned the third ventricle is the space between the two halves of the thalamus that lead to the fourth ventricle here via the cerebral aqueduct, kind of artificially created that again. Third ventricle would be here, fourth ventricle here. Remaining structures on the anterior brainstem, we already said cranial nerve number three, ocular motor. These are the cerebral peduncles between the thalamus and the pons. Look below the pons, here you see cranial nerve number six, the abducens. Number five has been torn off this side. I do believe I have it on the other half. Yes. So orient ourselves again. There's one, two, three is right there. Uh, four, this little guy, right there comes around the posterior aspect of the brainstem. Not very clean on this one. And here is five. This is the trigeminal.
that's five. And there's number six. Pick that up. Uh, there it is. Number six, abducens. So then, inferior to the abducens, and superior to the spinal cord. So this little section right here, that's the spinal cord. In between there and the pons, that is the medulla oblongata. So it would be all this in here. And here. And that concludes the demonstration of sheep brain here at Harper College. The date is April 28th, year 2012. Time is 2103. Thank you very much and have a nice night. <laughs>